Artlist.io Music licensing reimagined. I can see in those clips uh, before the last clip of music surviving out your YB or whatever. Um, I was just flicking up because uh, I thought the bus was gonna pick us up for church today and it didn't. So I got ready for nothing, but not for nothing because I I still got productive in a certain in, in, in a sense. Um, yeah, but the devil swear he be working, but he just don't work more than the Most High because you know. It's different ways you can still get to the word. Start don't make no excuse. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, with that being said, uh, as you all can see by the title and thumbnail, I am me. I am doing. I got a midterm due, and it was on an inter interview on a buyer, like a buyer who own a clothing brand or a small boutique or anything of that nature. And I had got the idea. Shout out to Tremaine to just make content while. Me and the person I'm interviewing during the interview. Um, he a stand up guy. He a cool dude. Y'all gonna see all that um, in this in the clip after this or whatever. Yeah. So with that being said, man, y'all like, comment, subscribe, um, and y'all get into the video and get into the interview. Music licensing reimagined. Designing me being who I am, mm -hmm. I was just glowing at first. Mm -hmm. So I always tell everybody the very first thing that I did was 
I had some jeans and a t-shirt, like a white button down t-shirt, like the one you got on. Mm-hmm. I had cut it and I had put it on the bottom of some jeans. Yeah. And this was like way before jeans was even like trending, like the whole stack jeans, mm-hmm. all of that was even like, it was like on the ride. Yeah. So I you started. Like ahead of your time. Type. Yeah. And I didn't even know it. So like at cool, that, cool. at that, like at that same exact point, I was doing that. And a lot of people, they didn't like it. They, it was just like, you tacky, you know, you look mm-hmm. weird, you look ugly. But that's like, how you express you. That's how I was expressing me. Yeah. So then after a while, a few people started to like it and mm-hmm. then asked me to make them jeans. Mm-hmm. So that became like my whole target audience it was high school kids. It was little kids, babies. It was college kids. It was yeah. teenagers. It was really anybody who just wanted to customize their avatar, be who they are, yeah. and just go luck with it. Inspiration. Yeah. Um, how could you describe a typical work day? Okay, cool. A typical work day would be thrifting to find patches, or if I already have patches, then really just turn on some music or a sermon mm-hmm. on YouTube, and then sewing. That's the typical work day. If not doing that, then replying back to messages. I get a lot of DMs. I get a lot of messages on Messenger. I get a few. You know, like custom? Like, yeah, yeah. Like people ask me, like, can I do this? Can I do this? For like a photo shoot, like actual custom thing. So mm-hmm. my whole brand, everything that's on my website, everything that I've made at one point in time, they were custom. So someone asked me to make it for them, and I made them, and then I made them again, put them on my website, and other people bought them. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, with these, I had made these when I was ready to run for Mr. Sophomore this mm-hmm. time last year. I made them for myself, yeah. but they had got like, a lot of attention, a lot of attraction, mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, bet. I'm going to remake them. I'm going to actually make a, a whole bunch of them and sell them. Yeah, that was up. That's where that came from. Uh, what software? What software you, you use to purchase your inventory? Also describe your inventory. Well, you basically did. I was gonna ask you yeah. describe it. What makes it unique? Okay, so I use Shopify. That's one of my websites, mm-hmm. like where I actually created my own website. Mm-hmm. When I was creating it, it didn't really take me long. I just watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and a whole bunch of TikTok research. Yeah, research. And then as far as manufacturers, Alibaba is really good. That's to kind of help me with these shorts as far as like sizing. Mm-hmm. I designed them as far as images, and I did a few sewing. Like the actual first pair, I sold them. The rest were mm-hmm. manufacturer remade. Yeah, what's up, bro? So yeah, what is what is one of your proudest achievements as a buyer? Okay, one of my proudest achievements, honestly, is when the order actually goes good. Because yeah. I'm not going to even tell you no, like full transparency. I'm a human, I done made mistakes in the past, especially when I first started sewing jeans mm-hmm. and just making jeans when I was fluent. I had jeans to fall apart. I had not get jeans done at the correct time frame. Mm-hmm. So one of the best outcomes as a buyer is just everything that you dreamed in your head, the vision coming to reality. Yeah. Like you designing something, like if I want to design a hat, that's what I really want to work on next is mm-hmm. hats. And then seeing myself, like, write it down, describing how I want to be seen and designed, and then on top of that, seeing it in real life, like, oh, I made that? Yeah. And then people actually liking it, like... Yeah. I, I can feel that. Thing. Yeah, like, this is very random. Yeah. I can feel that. Yeah. Well, okay, well, like you said, uh, you human made mistakes. Uh, that would lead me to my next question. Okay. What is one of your unsuccessful experiences as a buyer? Okay, one of my unsuccessful ex- experiences as a buyer was kind of like on the opposite side, like the vice versa side. Mm-hmm. Once again, like my order, it didn't go good. Like, especially mm-hmm. when I first started, it was like, mm-hmm. I'll never forget this one girl. Her name was Jasmine in high school. She was a chili dude. It was her birthday. I was making some custom jeans. Mm-hmm. And this is when I was first starting. So it was really easy to get discouraged. Yeah. I made her some jeans. I was still kind of learning the lead of man as far as how to sew, what to do, how to bleach, how to dye clothes. That's the same sewing machine you had to do? Same sewing machine, everything. Hey, that, everything. You been, been through the hood and all. Right? <laughs> been through there and back. We keep going left and right. Man, same sewing cool. machine, same sewing machine. But I kid you not, I had made her some jeans. Mm-hmm. They were like an ashy gray. Mm-hmm. And I had like rhinestones on them and all of that. And when I gave them to her, she loved them. It was cool. But after she was wearing them for a minute, they started to like open up, fall apart, like, the quality of them wasn't as good. So that really was, like, discouraging. Yeah. But it was also motivational because it was yeah. showed me, like, okay, Brandon, this didn't work, but let's do this. Yeah. Do me. it again. It and it's crazy. Yeah. It taught me, but also she seen it in me that I could do better. Mm. So she let me make her jeans again, and they went viral. Uh, shout out to Jasmine. Shout out to Jasmine. Shout out to Jasmine. Yeah, 
Shout out Jackson. Shout out Jackson because they went viral. Then I get more orders, and then that's how I'm here today. So I honestly thank God for community and customers. Right. Because right. they make brand by brand. I'm just so anybody could have. I ain't coming back to him no more. Yeah, like, bash me on Facebook. You know right, how I go. You know that's how I go. You know, create it, bro. So it's all love. What is something you love the most about being a bike? Something I love the most. Yeah. That's a good question. Something that I would say I love the most is honestly being able to express myself, mm-hmm. but also being able to see what the client or what the person on the other hand wants come to life too. Because mm-hmm. if I'm able to create that from what I bought and what I did with my sewing machine, mm-hmm. and they're able to love me and see their vision come to life too, kind of like how I was saying my vision, mm-hmm. but also their vision too, yeah. it's just full circle. Yeah. So that would be like the best way. I can't say that's my favorite thing about being the buyer or from a buying experience. I can't say that. Yeah. What is something challenging about like what you do? Everything that you know. Okay. The most challenging thing challenging? the most challenging thing I would say my top two is balance. Mm-hmm. Balance, 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 balance. Because a lot of people who own brands, especially from Birmingham, like clothing brands, a lot of people don't really like go off to college and go and meet new people. All they got time to do. Yeah, all they got time to do should be just focus heavy handed on the brand. And that works really good for them. And it worked. It works good for me too. So like, I still want to make sure that I'm balancing everything. So I would say that's one of the biggest challenges is not over committing to just school or over committing just to the brand. Still making sure yeah. that it's a good balance. Because like that fifty percent on what you love to do and fifty percent of books. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. like still seeing it for still getting to meet new people because at the end of the day, that's what actually makes the brand. Like I'm Mister mm-hmm. Sophomore right now, but. I'm with Mr. Sophomore for the people that I met beforehand to give me elected to Mr. Sophomore. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even have the brand if I didn't have customers who go here or customers from Birmingham to mm-hmm. like, you know, support me. Yeah. So that's one of the biggest challenges is balancing everything and not over committing. So that way everybody has enough energy. Overall support, like supporting is the biggest challenge. Yeah, because it can it can get tricky. Yeah, it can get tricky, especially like with me. I'm a first generation college student, so me too, bro. I didn't even know like when I came here, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I was coming to school. I still wanted to do my dreams. I actually wanted to expand and reach new target audience with that. And yeah. as of right now, I can say that's what I've been doing. Yeah, like, what you doing? And bro. it's been going, going really good. It's like, been going really good. good. So like, give yourself a pat on back. Bro. Yeah. So like, so like I'm juggling mm-hmm. joining ORs. I'm juggling being active in SGA in school and also mm-hmm. still running a brand. A whole business on the on on the back end. Like I'm still sewing jeans. I'm still designing. I'm still communicating back with people who text me. Like, hey, I'm sorry, I can't do this, or hey, I can't do this. And give me a little bit of time. I'm not gonna forget about you. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was it was tough though. Yeah. Um, I was gonna ask you where do you go physically or online to make purchases for your brand? But you said thrifting. Yes, I love blah, blah. thrifting. I love thrift. Wait, well, let me change the question. Then, what inspired you to thrift? Like, what gave you that okay. idea? Like back then, to then, because when you went there, obviously you said, "Okay, I can do this one." While I'm, you know. Yeah, I think I'm trying to. I don't even remember. I don't even really remember what inspired me to thrift. Mm. I just know. I love with one of my friends or something at one point. Mm. We just went to thrift, like went to like Goodwill, and then I started seeing pieces. One, the prices was really good with thrifting. So I started yeah. seeing pieces that I could actually use for other stuff. Like, I don't know why, but I was inspired by pieces that I could refurbish. Because mm-hmm. honestly, I'm not going to even hold you. I'm not going to even hold you. Like, before I was thrifting, thrifting, I was just cutting up stuff in my closet that I couldn't wear no more. But that's exactly like this. Yeah, that's the that's that's exact same thing. So, like, once I found out that, like, hey, I can go here and get jeans or clothes for a good decent price that's yeah. actually i can style and make them fly like i can still express myself yeah customize my avatar i was like yeah. i'm going for it it is it was a motivation bro. yeah and then as far as like the whole manufacturing and stuff i just honestly kept trying to do a little research because a lot of people don't really like talking about their manufacturers and all of that yeah. i just kept doing research i kept trying to find a good one i kept dm dming them like mm-hmm. reaching out to them on whatsapp and then yeah. eventually i just found a good one talking 
I sent him the image. He sent me back a mock-up. We talked about sizes, and then that was that. It didn't take that long for them to make them either. I like that. They come with patience and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, before you get to that, because there's some questions leading to those. Okay. Um, where, no, how do you tend to market, and how often do you get the market? Like, okay. I peep, like, on Instagram, you know how you, your platform, like, where the stuff you're involved in, you, you market, like, I peeped that like that. Like, yeah. like, you smart, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, what gave you the. And the that kind of goes. All that that kind of goes back to the question that we had earlier. Mm-hmm. So, with the target audience, mm-hmm. I know that my target audience typically is. It could be little kids, it could be parents with kids. I do kids jeans too. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of tailoring as well. Mm-hmm. So, the best marketing is word of mouth. So, meeting people exactly where they are is my number one to go to as far as marketing. I can make a whole bunch of posts on Instagram, a story post, but people knowing who you are, having a strong relationship with you, it it can't go wrong. So, I have my collegiate bond brothers, 30 of them coming to me to get their suits tailored when they got an interview or they got to go here, go there. And then I have people hitting me up. Like, the fashion society asked me to be in fashion shows because yeah. of the relationships that I have. Yeah. So it's just like marketing, word of mouth, really being involved, getting to know people, it comes back around full circle because then they look out for you, look out for them, and then we both win. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I get exactly. Collaborations. It's, like, it's, it's something I heard. It says success, uh, success attracts the person. No, the person you becoming attracts success. Like, yeah. You know how you saying you build that character up for yourself and then, you know. Yeah. It's like it flows to you. Like it's yeah, to you. yeah, like the opportunity started to come yeah. once I started focusing on growing myself, my mind, and then personal meeting new people. Yeah, personal development first and then meeting new people. Yes. Getting to know what they like to do. It's like, okay, cool, you like to do this? I got a homeboy that do the exact same thing. Yeah. I got a sister that do the exact same thing. And yeah. it's just like leveraging those type of connections is the best way that I've been able to networking. market my brand. Yeah, and networking, honestly, like every opportunity, every single day I try to meet at least like one or two new people. That's cool. Even if it's just like a hey, what's up? What's your Instagram? Yeah. Not even on some hey, I do jeans, let me talk to you about my custom yeah, brand. Like, you, you know, that, like hey, like yeah, what do you like to do? Yeah. yeah. And then if you need any help, hey, I'm here, just let me know. Yeah, you can work both ways. Yeah, because you meet somebody who probably know more than you. Who know more than me, exactly. There's an art in learning from people, bro, and not be, remain teachable. Remain teachable, yes. That's one of my biggest things. That's a tip I would give to anybody, because even me, still to this day, I reach out to bigger brands. I reach out to people who do custom suits. Like, hey, can you mentor me? Can you show me what you've done? Mm -hmm. I know where you're at. I'm trying to get to where you're going and where you've been at. It's very inspirational. Full circle. Like, right now, he... He teaching me right now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the gems from him. You know what I'm saying? Any type of gems um, I could drop, I'm here. What is one soft skill and hard skill necessary to be a successful buyer? Like a soft skill that you... Okay. I would definitely say a soft skill would be communication. Okay. For okay. sure communication because no one wants to buy anything or you don't want to buy anything from someone who is... Rude, doesn't know how to talk to people, doesn't know how to hold a conversation, yeah. has a bad attitude problem. Customer service. Ad. Yeah, customer service is like horrible. Yeah. Doesn't resp- reply back to messages. And once again, granted, even myself, I had made a few mistakes. I'm human too, so like yeah. it happens. Yeah, but the, the, the best type of soft skill to be a successful buyer is for sure good communication and then... A hard skill would be knowing exactly how to market. Okay. Because it's different ways to market. It's different mm-hmm. ways. Like, for example, people run Facebook ads. People mm-hmm. run Instagram ads. People do pop-up shops. Yeah. Like, it's different ways to it, really it market. There's a lot so of ways, too. I would say learning the best ways as far as a hard skill, soft skill, for sure, be communication. Because once you know how to communicate, mm-hmm. it's not cool. Like, people are going to be comfortable around you to be their selves. And that's yeah. the whole purpose because yeah. my brand was based off expressing yourself. Yeah. Customizing the you. Customizing your avatar. Yeah. So. Yeah. Definitely good. 
Brando by Brando, it's like me expressing my art at the same time. Because mm. everything is art. Like, your jacket, that's art. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? How you style this today, that's art. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All of this stuff is just art. It's just different forms of expressing. Yeah. Myself, yourself, each other. People paint, people sing, people rap. Agreed. People like to drive cars. Mm-hmm. People like to play the video game. Like, everybody has their own ways of expressing their stuff. We just got to find what it is. Uh-huh. And really lock in on that. Because that's where the passion yeah. comes in. Like, yeah. the passion, the yeah. purpose. Focus on your life. Yeah, your yeah. life, your precision, that, all of Focus that. Focus on your life. Yeah. That's one of them gems. Yeah. Yeah. Life gem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all in all. Real. All in all. Without a doubt. What motivated or inspired you to start so young to be a designer? I think you basically answer all that, too. But yeah. this, you, you, you think of it. I really do think that what inspired me the most would honestly be just trying something different, trying something new. Mm -hmm. Seeing like, hey, I got these shoes and I got this shirt. Mm -hmm. I got these jeans, but let me add this to those jeans just to make them pop a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Just being very attention to detail, that kind of really inspired me when I was younger. Knowing, okay, Brandon, I could glue this right here and this match that shade. Mm -hmm. So let me just color coordinate this just like that. Yeah, it's all about color coordinate. Coordinate, color coordinate. Yes. All you gotta do is color coordinate. Your feet warm. Look, your feet warm. Yeah. It's like that. You walking with confidence. Your feet warm. Yes, you know confidence. And that that's also the thing. Like when I was start, when I started to do those type of things, it was teaching me confidence. Because yeah. at the same time, yeah. although a few people didn't like it and that kind of hurt my confidence, yeah. it's to be my confidence too. Because just like wait, y'all looking at me, y'all paying me attention, like. What? Right, bro. Like, and then people want to ask. People actually want me to make them stuff, and it's just yeah. like the way I was able to do a full three sixty from the kid being bullied and talked about in middle school to yes, graduating. Yes, we to the bank. You know, what I'm saying? Yes, <laughs> like, to the bank. like it came around full circle, like yeah. being that kid and then graduating prom king, homecoming king, class president. Pop it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just Pop like it. it was always like a full circle thing. So yeah, yeah I agree with you, bro. Uh, authenticity. Authenticity. Authentic. Authenticity. How do you say it? I know what word you're trying to say, but I don't yeah. know what it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm going yeah, to be true. Be authentic. Authenticity. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You got it. I got it right. Almost. almost. It sounds like you just got it right. So we got it right. So yeah. yeah. Vernacular. It's been our <laughs> vernacular. What is the best advice that you would give someone who is interested in becoming a buyer? Okay, the best advice I would give to anyone who's interested in becoming a buyer as far as buying things in bulk, a business owner, anything is to, kind of the tip that we said earlier about continuing to learn, Mm -hmm. I would say continuing to learn and continuing to just evolve. Yeah. And when I say evolve, I mean... Staying true to why you started in the first place. Yeah. And then on top of that, learning new things that work. Because a lot of times when I'm making jeans and when I'm marketing, when I'm talking to people, they are the ones, like, my peers on this campus are the ones to really give me new advice and marketing strategies, new things to try. And, you, and those things are things that kind of help yeah. me also evolve. So I would say continuing to learn. And staying faithful too. Staying yeah. faithful. A discouragement. Comes, discouragement. Believe. Like that is one of the biggest things it comes. Like discouragement and fear. Yeah. Like those are the one of the biggest things. I would say all of those, like the five things that I would say, and I, I was watching some the other day and I heard him say it. Mm-hmm. The five things that attack your faith, even when you think about faith with running a business, mm-hmm. is fear. You scared about how it's gonna turn out. You rejecting yourself before anybody else could reject you. Mm-hmm. You you be our biggest critic. In our our head, biggest though. critic in our head. Half of the time, it don't even. It's an imaginary wall. We just put that wall right there. Yeah. So I would say, try your hardest not to look at stuff from the spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. Immaturity. So thinking small minded, thinking that oh it's not possible. Yeah. Letting the smallest things anger you. So fear, immaturity, anger. Don't let everything that's not working out anger you for you to quit your business or for you to not want to be a buyer, for you not to design the next thing. Because that one thing could be the next big thing, making right. you thousands of dollars. Like, bro, I believe. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, so, I believe we're getting out camera. I, tell, I talk about that. 
So yeah, I would say fear, fear, fear yes, fear, anger, immaturity, tiredness. Because it's gonna be some times where you're gonna get tired. Like, it's just some times where I've been tired, but once that fire kick in, that discipline kick in, it's just like okay, let's get this done so I can move to the next thing. Yeah, let's do this right the first time so I can get the next thing done, yeah. or so I can put my energy over here. And that's just in life in general. You but got to. Especially, with a, especially if you consider buying anything, definitely, 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 definitely. Don't let tiredness stop you. And then don't let certain things, like how anger could make you mad, don't let certain things hurt you too. Yeah. Because when I started my brand, like I was telling you, when people was talking about it and when the girl, like, when she was like, dang, like, yeah. I believe in you, but like, do better. Like, I'm going to let you redo it again. Don't yeah. let certain things hurt you. To where you just become stagnant. Yeah, be able to take constructive criticism. Yeah, take yeah, exactly take constructive yeah. criti- take constructive criticism mm-hmm. and use that to become better. Yeah. Use feedback to become better. Yeah. All of those are tips that I would give to anybody who's considering being a buyer, a business owner, a designer, anything. Knowing all of those things is things that can attack your faith, but knowing and having faith that you are him, you are her, right. and you will be whatever you see yourself as. Right, like whatever you say you're gonna be, it's possible. It's possible, mm-hmm. and you will achieve it. You just gotta do it day by day. Mm-hmm. Okay, these all those questions I just asked you was um, for my midterm. Okay, then so, midterm A plus. No about help me. like Dada Gardner. Dada Gardner, come, come, come on, boy, right? Dada Gardner, Dada Gardner, come on now. Do right, come on now, come on now. Right. We here, we locking in. Right, you know what I'm saying? Working, we working. All right, these are personal questions. Okay, man, let's do it. What are some Manner, uh, manufacturer tips and negotiation tricks I can use or know. Okay, Ben. I would say checking out prices, different mm-hmm. prices for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure like, for if sure. I got three manufacturers, like, see yeah, them. seeing which one fits your price range, mm-hmm. and also knowing that sometimes they be in different areas, like the like as far as communication, mm-hmm. different time zones. You can't let like you can't let that stop you. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they don't really be knowing. And sometimes a few of them do be people who are just scammers. So of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Being smart on that end, I would say being smart on that end, checking different price ranges, and then getting mock ups for sure. Yeah, getting mock ups. Got a sample order. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sample order mock ups because sometimes you can't. Do a bulk order. I never had like no problems for for doing that. I don't really be doing that many manufacturer things because I do a lot of custom. Yeah. But when I did, I didn't. I I, I did the right route. I didn't just order everything in bulk. I got a manufacturer and then I had got a sample order, yeah. a mock up first. Yeah. Then I was okay, cool. We can proceed. Yeah, that was leading me to my next question. I was gonna ask you um, pre order method or bulk order method. What would? You okay. Say? Cause okay, I, cause I like I don't the research I do, but they pre order scare somebody, bro. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, some people it works for some people. Yeah, I never tried the pre order method because I didn't want to scare anybody. One mm-hmm. and two, and I then they both can scare the right. Like they both, that's why I say which one because it come. This would come with it, and I'm down for it. Right, right, right. and because I'm not gonna lie, I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I got some homeboys who do. <laughs> 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 Right, that boy is crazy. That's what I... <laughs> that no young bulls, that no young bulls. Yeah. But I ain't gonna lie, I do have some homeboys who do the pre order method, and I got some homeboys who do the bulk order method. Like, for example, with me, when I had did these, mm-hmm. I just dropped them, and I had already had them, so I was just selling them. So, okay. technically, I went the bulk order method. Yeah. So, it really depends on the brand and how you want to go about marketing it. Because mm-hmm. when I did the bulk order, I had. Marketing is a type of like I had marketing videos. I had kind of took pictures a different way to market it. So like, mm-hmm. okay, hey, I had these on hand. We can get them gone. Yeah. However you want to wear them, this is how I could style them. This is how you should style them. Mm-hmm. These is why you should wear them. And some people do that from the very get go. Like, hey, this is a design. This is something I'm, I'm having made. So mm-hmm. send your money now, and then once it gets ready, I'll send them. Yeah. So a lot of times it really be supply and demand. So I said supply and demand, I mean like knowing how much the people want this specific thing. Mm-hmm. So if you were to design a hat right now, you were to just take a picture of it with a white screen on the background and be like, pre-order 
if yo if you're like people or like you saying how I, like say me I want to model it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to be like I want to be the face of it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So like let's say you design this jacket, right? Cool, mm-hmm. man. I designed this jacket. I'm the person with that jacket. Everybody, oh man, that jacket hard. Yeah. Okay, cool. It is hard. You know what? If you want it, I got you. I'm gonna get a few pre ordered made right now. You can go ahead and pre order it and send me the money for it now. And then once I get not making money, I'll send you the product. Yeah. So that's one way and that's a lot of people use that way, a lot of people just use the other way with manufacturers mm-hmm. and they just get it in bulk and they just sell it because it's on hand. It's yeah. convenient. Yeah. When you think about it, you can go to a pop up shop and you can have stuff yeah. on hand, you can just sell it. You're gonna like you're for sure guaranteed going to sell something at yeah. a pop up shop or at any type of vendors where like you're set up a table, mm-hmm. people are gonna want to support people come. Like courtyard Wednesdays. Yeah, that's a good time. Those are like the perfect times. So I sold a whole bunch of the courtyard Wednesday just yeah. because I'm on the ground. I have them right here. They like you can look at see whatever size uh, you want. Yeah. You know, it's so, like it's pros and cons with both. Yeah. You know, cause a con with buying in bulk could be, oh man, you got that fear back your head, am I gonna sell these? Yeah. But once again, you live in the spirit of fear. So like you gotta you gotta have that type of confidence and that type of mindset that hey, there's somebody who wants this, my work is good, and they're gonna get gone. Yeah. And then you just have to trust that that's gonna happen. I'm gonna market it this type of way. If this don't work, I'm listening to the feedback, I'm looking to the analytics, and I'm gonna market it this type of way. Yeah. If not, next time I'm gonna consider doing pre orders to see who actually would be interested in this product, and then I'm gonna do pre orders. You know what I'm saying? So it's really just like a a toss of a coin. Yeah. This word, okay, but I'm continuing to do this. This didn't work. Let me do this next time. Okay, cool. Yeah. I appreciate it. For sure. Um, how do you handle situations where an item is out of stock or unavailable from a supplier or something like that? Or you don't have with a customer and they want? Like, how do you handle those situations? Okay, cool. The very first thing I try to do is find a solution really quickly. So yeah. let's say someone... Well, okay, the first two things is to communicate, hey, I don't have this, or hey, the manufacturer doesn't have this, so let me try to go to the next step, which is to be finding a solution. And honestly, sometimes the solutions could be talking to another manufacturer that you already was talking to, but you were considering anyway. Yeah. They might be able to help you. They might have what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Or in my case, going to another store, trying to find a certain type of dye or a certain type of thread or a certain type of needle or something that I need yeah. to create what I'm creating. So I would say communication, being transparent, mm-hmm. not just because I, I had times where I would, people would like size 40 jeans, red, I'm trying to find size 40 jeans. I can't find it. Yeah. They text me, hey, how's my order going? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Knowing your sizes mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but also knowing how to pivot. Pivot. How to adapt in the moment. Like, okay, yeah. normally I go to this store or to this manufacturer to get my items, but they're sold out. They don't have it, but I know I got people who pre-ordered already. Mm-hmm. Let me see what I can do. Okay, yeah. let me go to another store. Let me hit up them. Let me see what they're talking about. You know, because regardless, there's a supply for every demand. So mm-hmm. somewhere, what you need is somewhere. Whatever you need is somewhere you just have to find it in certain yeah, type of way. Yeah, yeah, do what you do what you can do, and then the other half what we can't do. Yeah, the other half will get done. The other half will get done. Cause I ain't gonna lie, it's been times like that where I took an order. Maybe the girl was like a size seven, and I've been to three different stores, can't find a size seven. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Okay, well let me see if I could order them offline. Let me see if I could text manufacturers to get some jeans in bulk, so that I don't have to do this next time. Yeah, you know, really just learning from the experience. Yeah. Adapting and learning from the experience. How you pivot is how you prosper. So Thank when something you. comes on, when something comes wrong, knowing how to, okay, boom, this is cool, but let me just shift and get this handled that way. Yeah. The best experience in life is, you know, the best life experience is experience in life. Bro. Yeah, so, that's hard. That's yeah. hard. That's hard. I might need to get that tatted somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go out of there. That might be my next little tat. Hey, yeah. tat inspired by car, bro. It's yeah, like, nothing too so, crazy. How do you stay organized and manage multiple projects? Okay, boom. This is the very thing that I'm going to say that I always tell myself. These two things. Mm. If you fail to plan, 
you're planning Ooh. to fail. So that one, hey. hey. So yeah, I, I'm running back one last time. I'm running back. Hey, I'm running back. Again. Again. I'm running back. Again. Repeat. I'm, I'm running back. Again. Running back. Okay, boom. If you fail to plan, which means if you do not plan, you're planning to fail. And the second one is proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. So those two things are something that I always would plan in the back of my mind mm-hmm. to manage everything so I'm not falling too behind. Because mm-hmm. sometimes it gets hard with balancing everything as far as like being in SGA, joining orgs, yeah. having a brand, trying to balance every single thing, having a social life at the same time. Yeah. Sometimes it can get, you can kind of get lost. You kind of just be running around in a circle. Yeah. But when you see how you think about, okay, Brandon, let me do this this way because I know I'm going to be busy then so let me do that that way yeah. and then boom proper preparation prevents piss poor performance so as long as you prepare to the best of your ability mm-hmm. beforehand you'll be good yeah. like honestly like just overall planning every single detail to the best of your ability that you can at that time in the moment the rest is the rest is history I got one more question okay where can they find you, bro? What's your Instagram? Okay, then. So, my Instagram is Brandon by Brando. Yeah. My Facebook is Gene Man. And from the city, I'm pretty sure y'all know who this man is, bro. Yeah. I remember, I, I looked at our messages on Messenger, bro. I For hit real? you up about some jeans, but that was a while back. Oh, dang. You know what I'm saying? I thought y'all would have made you some. Yeah. It's not crazy. You still can, bro. Oh, you yeah. Know, I, I got to. You, know, you got to collab. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. Of course, of course. Hey, Car Brats out, man. Out, out. Y'all go follow my boy's social media, and I appreciate y'all for watching. Yes, sir.